In this video, we are discussing the 15 most essential tips for playing Marvel Strike Force. Now, this list is primarily focused for newer beginner players, but hey, if you've been playing Marvel Strike Force for a while, maybe one or more of these tips can still help you. And if you're ready for this list, guys, find that like button and let's go smash it! Alley flying. Yo, what is up, Valley Maniacs? I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope you're ready to count down the top 15 most essential tips for Marvel Strike Force. Now, like I said, this is primarily focused for newer players, but hopefully there's still some tips in here that will uh, help you even if you've been playing for a while. And if this is your first time here on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified as soon as a new Marvel Strike Force video is up or a new Marvel Future Revolution video because we are covering both games on this channel. Now, without further ado, let's go count down the top 15 tips for newer players. Let's go into the game and talk about it right now. Now, the, the number one tip that I have for any player, whether you're a beginning player or a mid-game player or an end-game player, and this is this is a very obvious tip. You might be saying, Valley, I know that. I know what this tip should be. Well, I, I, I get lost of it sometimes, you know, especially with some of the decisions from Scopely. And the number one tip, have fun. Now, uh, th this I, I lose sight of this sometimes with all the bottlenecks chasing the meta by all these bad decisions by Scopely. But hey, it's uh, it, at the end of the day, we play this game because either we enjoy Marvel or we enjoy this hero collector style game or or we just enjoy this game uh, in general or the alliance or whatever. But most of the time we start this because we are having fun or we want to have fun. So uh, that's that's number, the number one thing not to lose sight of. And like I said, it, it can be very uh, hard to do sometimes, especially with some of the scopely decisions or these new meta that you're chasing. But yeah, they're having fun. Now, uh, you got to remember as well, meta chasing the meta, it either requires playing the game for a long period of time. And at this point, Marvel Strike Force has been out for over three years now. So uh, if, if, you if you're a newer or mid game, player you're probably not going to get that time element uh so the only means of catching up to the current meta is by spending a lot of money and if you're not willing to spend a lot of money uh you could still have fun you could still have a lot of fun in marvel strike force but but being at that end game meta level might be a little challenging so just set your level just set your expectations uh properly for where you are in the game the time that you've been playing and yes uh have fun uh the number number two tip is save your power cores, use these wisely. Every game has this premium type resource. Power cores is the premium resource in Marvel Strike Force and use those wisely. Let's, let's talk about the places that you can use these uh, energy reef or these power cores. And the number one is yes, the energy refreshes. Either refreshing your campaign energy here or refreshing your ISO 8 energy. Uh, in my opinion, those are the best places that you could use your uh, cores. Other places that you could use them, uh, sometimes you're farming characters and maybe maybe you need their character shards right now. One example is Multiple Man. He's required for this Adam Warlock event. His first, first uh, mythic legendary event is coming up in a couple of days. And let's say I needed these Multiple Man shards right now. Maybe I was short just a few of these. Well. Spending these on refreshing these character nodes, not a bad thing if you really need those character shards because of a legendary event or something like that. Most of the time, this is not a great idea, but if you're really needing these shards in a short period of time, this is where you could do it. Also refreshing these stores. If we go back out to the main screen of the game here and we look at these stores, sometimes there's stuff that you want to pop up in these stores a little more often. Sometimes pieces of gear, sometimes uh, other things, uh, maybe characters that pop up in a raid store or something like that. Uh, refresh Refreshing these stores, if, if again, you're looking to minimize the time, this may not be a bad thing. Not, not generally the best use of these cores, but sometimes it may be good for where you are in the game. And let's talk about some bad use of these cores orbs now yes as a newer player these premium orbs all these orbs are going to be a lot more valuable to you than someone that's been playing for the game for a while a anytime i get a character that i don't have at seven stars i'm happy from this premium orb and as a beginner player pretty much most of the characters that you get will will not be at seven stars so uh although these are good i would not spend my money on these uh, orbs 
any of these orbs. This Titania student orb, not a great value. These Realm of Possibility orbs, not a great value. Uh, once in a while, when I'm really starved for resources, I'll buy one of these gold orbs or these training orbs, but they're not a good value. So it's, it's not a great use of your resources. Other place that I get people asking questions about is these uh, character shards right here. Now, the good thing, they used to have these uh, fully crafted gear pieces. Uh, those are a horrible value. These are also not a great value. I would say I would hold off on all of these unless unless you need a character at a certain star level and purchasing this will get that character to the next star level uh normally it's not a great idea to purchase these so that is uh where you could get now the place that you could get your most of your power cores is going to be this arena it's going to unlock at level 30. uh you could also get power cores from your objectives your daily objectives certain certain missions especially those first time rewards sometimes they have power cores certain calendars but uh save these these are the premium resource in the game uh so yes use them wisely the next tip number three and this is another one that may sound very very obvious but focus your farming on strong teams and strong characters now in the beginning there's not a lot of strong overall teams that's gonna last all the way to mid and end game but some of the earlier teams that you could focus on on a uh, as a newer player the wave one avengers pretty good they still have some value at the end game the guardians they're not very valuable at the end game but as an earlier player you don't have access to a lot of the teams out there and gamora she's one of the better characters in the game especially when you get charged so uh the guardians are the characters that you could focus on a little bit i wouldn't put too many resources into them just enough to get you uh to uh, unlock a, a few other teams and it's sinister six uh and again not not a team that doesn't have a lot of value at the end game uh some of the characters like uh electro and swarm maybe you're gonna pair them with dr six once you unlock that legendary character but uh those, those are the teams that i would focus on they they're not gonna be super valuable at the end game but they'll get you to some beginning level uh nodes you can unlock certain nodes and start to farm other teams so uh those are ones that you could focus on a little bit uh and then uh where you want to this is the way i always prioritize teams uh, i always focus on arena because that is where you can get your power cords you're doing this every single day five times a day so arena is my most uh, valuable game mode and that is where i focus on my team so as a beginner player mid game player end game player i i would recommend focusing on your arena team you're going to unlock the arena at level 30. uh next i think is raids you're going to unlock those a little earlier so it, it, as a brand new player you may want to focus on raids first because that unlocks at level 25 but raids is also something that you're doing every day you're going to team with your alliance and getting a lot of your gear rewards a lot of your other rewards are going to be coming from the raids these are your two most valuable modes in my opinion so that's where you should focus a lot of your team building once you have a solid arena team and you once you have a solid raid team that could clear whatever raid your alliance is doing that's when i think you should focus on other teams some of your more backup teams some of your teams that could unlock legendary characters some of your war offense war defense teams and that is when i think you should focus on some dark dimension teams as as well uh once your arena and raids are set so uh that's 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 yeah very very important you don't have a lot of resources so you got to manage them correctly and also certain characters if we look at a lot of these stronger teams from the end game uh you'll notice that we don't have to focus on all of these characters if we look at the black order at one time all of these members uh were very valuable but thanos still very valuable ebony moss still very valuable uh if we had to focus on two of the symbiotes they're all pretty good you need them in the some of these end game raids but if i had to focus on just a couple characters symbiote spider-man and anti-venom if we look at the marauders they've fallen off a lot on war defense but sinister emma frost still has some value and then uh yeah as so as we go down to these teams and i'm not sure what this infinity watch is going to look like once adam warlock comes out we get a little more testing but i think gamora is a character that's not going to fall off for a little bit if we look at this axeman team beast jubilee bishop they're going to be around for a while so says so, so yes yeah, so when you're focused on individual characters in these strong teams uh you don't have to focus on every single character in these teams you could you could limit it to these characters that are going to be around for a while that's going to have that staying power to uh to make your resources stretch them as far as possible uh and then uh, the way i focus on individual characters generally i tend to focus on the damage characters first uh so either the brawlers or the blasters and and it may not be by that class the damage dealer may be like a protector or a healer or something or a good 
controller or something like that so uh your damage dealers on the team i think they're the most important then i think either the control or the healing the so either the controller or the support character i think should be the next character that you focus on because especially in raids things that you need a lot of sustainability survivability you need uh those in there but i think damage is more important and then protection so tanks i think are falling off a little bit right now in the meta but that that is the general order that i would focus on these characters obviously different teams are going to look a little different but if it just if i had to go super broad in general that's how it focus on all right campaigns and challenges i think it's very important to get all these campaigns three start as fast as possible that way you could get the gear and you can get the character shards that you need so what do we need for them uh the the you get the mystic and the iso campaigns that unlock right here the mystic unlocks at level 55 the iso 8 campaign unlocks at level 55 once you get these once you get to the proper commander level uh unlock these because you're going to need resources in all of these uh the cosmic unlocks at level 45 and then uh you're going to get some hard chapters on heroes villains and a nexus those uh heroes and villains chapter 7 and a nexus chapter 8 will unlock at level 70 and then once you finish nexus chapter 8 over here then you could unlock do more so around level 70 is when you should uh, unlock all of these but uh whatever level you're on try to get the maximum uh stars that you can on whatever character you're or whatever stage that you could get to uh based on whatever your commander level is now one important note that i do want to focus on here especially for newer players is this right here heroes seven uh what is this seven uh the hella no the seven six all right so i i for a long time i've said this is the cutoff i think between a new player and mid game player once you have this seven six at three stars and you can start to focus on hella uh that's gonna do a few things for you it's gonna be able it's gonna allow you to unlock uh one of the characters for phoenix says because she is a villain mystic controller it's gonna allow you to unlock black bolt who you need to unlock ebony maw and ebony maw black bolt still very relevant in today's meta phoenix not as important but i still think that this is an important node so uh early on you're going to need to focus on either some aim hydra or sinister six and then you're going to need to focus on those mystic villain characters as well so this is this is more a few months down the line but keep this in mind and like because i do think this is the transition point between an early player and a mid game player so get those and then as far as your uh, challenges you're gonna you could do these every day we had the sundays that you could do all of them these unlock at level eight and uh the important thing about these challenges you get three uh passes per day of all these challenges or or the whatever's open you know uh, these training days you get them sundays tuesdays and fridays uh everything is open on sundays but you get three finishes for uh, whatever's open that day you get unlimited attempts so i would i would use as many attempts as possible get the maximum star level of these because this is also very important the three star three star these challenges three star these campaigns as early as possible and they, you're gonna it's gonna help you with your farming down the line uh let's talk about alliances because that's also very important join a uh, active alliances off or as as soon as you can these alliances are available at level 20 and the raids are available at level 25 so you're, you're gonna get a lot of good rewards and i recommend going for alliance that is matching your activity level so if you're a player that plays very hardcore you don't want to be in a casual alliance and if you're a casual player you don't want to be a hardcore alliance and if you're a mid you know mid-level activity player you want to be in a activity let's that's around your level that way you avoid frustration you could be with uh, players that are around as hardcore as you and then when you get to wars which unlocks when you're level player 45 but your alliance needs to be at level 20 uh then your wars will be around that competitive level competitiveness level as well the way you get to the uh alliance level when you go to star tech you see our alliance at level 80 right now level 20 is when you could start to do wards and obviously the players that do that need to be at level 45 so very very important stuff the wards you're getting a lot of resources you're getting war currency there's a lot of great characters in the war store so that war is going to be very important especially for these legendary unlocks down the road so uh getting an alliance as uh, early as you can get to level 20 and get in that alliance and discord is a very good resource for finding uh good alliances uh, you could go on my discord there's the 
main Discord. Some of the links will be down below, so check those out. All right, let's talk about resource management. You got a lot of resources to manage in this game. There's a lot of bottlenecks. One of the big ones, or a couple of big ones, are gold and training mats, and using those on leveling up characters. As you can see, you're not going to be able to level up every single character. Uh, you're not going to be able to level up all your good characters. You have to make choices, so choosing which ones to level up uh, is very important and again starting off with the best teams to get you through arena and then the raids I think are the most important so use your gold and training mats only on the characters that you plan to use down the road let's talk about a couple other resources that I think are a little more valuable uh, the first one is these promo credits now these are very short supply even at the end game level you don't get a lot of these so uh, who you purchase your red stars for in the store is going to be important uh, what I would always recommend is characters that you that are going to give Give you an immediate benefit by getting those red stars uh make sure you're not using uh, these red stars these promotion credits on characters that you're not going to get the gold stars for because let's say this ultimus uh let's say i have a five gold star ultimus but i purchased this level six red star ultimus well i'm only going to get the benefit up until level five i'm not going to get that full benefit of level six ultimus uh red stars until i get those gold stars for him so if i'm not going to get those gold stars very soon probably should not purchase these you probably either save it or use it on a different characters it's going to get you immediate benefit or focus on characters going to get you benefit down the road don't focus on characters that were valuable or are not going to be valuable down the road and you could kind of see some of the meta shifts by some of the content that's out there uh look at look at look at the different uh, content creators channel to see what is coming up in the meta but very important uh, resource there so spend your promo credits wisely you also want to spend your t4 credits very wisely if you're not planning on getting an immediate benefit from this some t4s they're just not worth it some t4s are no brainers uh but even some of these good t4s if you're not planning to use that character don't use that t4s at the beginning and mid uh, game stages t4 resources very very in short supply so you got to use them wisely uh only use them on the characters that you're either using right now and plan to use for a, a, a little bit more or planning on the characters that are going to be valuable in the future or that you're planning to use in the future so really really protect your t4s and protect your promo credits all right also another thing the next tip manage the characters that get iso 8 uh iso 8 is becoming a requirement for a lot of game content right now uh this past patch just had it for doom raids as far as a requirement uh we're getting our first mythic legendary which the legendary character requires these iso 8 at certain levels and we're also getting a few more events that require iso 8 at certain levels so again with with this just like your promo credits and your t4s only use these on characters that you're going to plan to use right away or for a little bit down the road or or you're going to need these to unlock certain things like multiple man not that great of a character but eventually i'm going to need those that level 5 iso 8 to get that level 7 that 7 star iso 8 or that 7 star version of adam more like same with polaris so only use it on characters that that are going to give you value uh like either right in the raids or war or or your campaigns or you're going to use to unlock different legendaries so uh that that's that's what i would recommend for your iso 8 now these orbs you're going to get a lot of orbs in the game and like i said towards the beginning of the game when you don't have a lot of resources you don't have a lot of characters these orbs are going to be a lot more valuable uh manage manage the timing of these because as as you start playing these get less and less valuable they're not as important to open same with these raid orbs if you've been playing very not for a long time you're going to want to open these right away so you can keep your characters right away as you've been playing for a while and a lot of your characters get geared up you don't have to open these orbs a lot uh what i've always recommended is if you need anything in that orb right away open your orbs if you can afford to wait you don't need it right away it's not as valuable you could uh you could wait on it and just hold it now one thing i do want to talk about is these red star orbs uh at certain times you're going to get these characters that are released into the game and a lot of times when characters are released in the game they have this additional 15 or a, and a, a increased drop rate in these red star orbs as you can see adam warlock uh has this increased drop rate right now he has a 15 percent that of getting uh, dropped in whatever star level you're getting uh the rest of these characters have a small chance so i would recommend saving these uh red star orbs for characters that you know are going to be valuable and again looking at some of the videos and some of the content creation out there you can see which characters are going to be valuable down the line uh use your red stars for those characters when there's a good character in there that you want that increased drop rate that is when i recommend opening these uh red star orbs i don't recommend open them for these dark promotion credits for ultron uh or ultimus or maybe doom down the line 
I op open them whenever stuff. I wouldn't recommend opening these into these non uh, non uh, upgraded upgrade chances. Now, if you're a newer player and you don't have a lot, you may just open these and uh, get started with your roster. But as you start to progress and you and more of your characters get these uh, red stars on them, uh, hold off for that increased drop rate, especially on the characters that look like they're going to be around in the meta for a long, long time. All right, cooldowns. This is a real simple one. We talked about using energy, your cores on the energy. Manage these cooldowns. We have right now, the maximum is 139 energy that you could get. It can go higher than that if you're purchasing offers, things like that, but just through natural uh, energy refills, uh, you're gonna, you're, it's 139. So before you log off or before you go to sleep, use as much energy as you can, use as much uh, ISO 8 energy as you can. Uh, and I, that's a pretty simple one, but I, it, it is one that I think a lot of people forget. Next tip. Uh, you do all your daily objectives and play consistently. You're getting a lot of rewards through these daily objectives. I talked about, you know, it's like this one. You're getting power cores. You're getting these strike pass tokens. And as and you're getting a lot of these rewards in the strike pass. Uh, so do your daily objectives every day. Log in every day. Try not to let this top off every day. Uh, like I said in the beginning, one of the most valuable resources you have in games like this is time. So what you get from time is all these resources from playing consistently. And if you do that, you should be at a higher level than someone that plays a few times. And I, and I think it's a very obvious one, but it's one that I think a lot of people forget. Uh, play consistently. You're going you're gonna to get it a lot uh, further on. All right. Uh, the best modes to test out new characters and new teams and their synergies and gameplay is Blitz, which unlocks at level 14. And you're going to get and you're, you're going to want to get some of these Blitz resources as well. Uh, some of these rewards, especially for new player Blitzes, uh, you're going to get some of these valuable shards. You're going to get some of these valuable Blitz orb fragments uh, for certain characters. You're going to get red stars for them. And you're going to get a lot of valuable milestone uh, with these. So Blitz is a very good game mode for newer players. I would recommend testing out your teams, getting to know them, getting to know the synergies, the turn orders. Real-time arena, not a very fun game mode, and uh, but it is a it is a place that you could continuously play with your characters. Once in a while, you'll get uh, really bad matchups. Once in a while, you get really good matchups. Most of the time, you're going to get very uh, questionable matchups, but Real-time arena, very good. That unlocks at level 64. It may not be the most fun to play because it's it's kind of blind. You're going in against these teams, and you, you don't know who the team is, so you don't know what the right counters are. But sometimes you'll get a lot of valuable experience from Real Time Arena. So Blitz, Real Time Arena, test out your teams. I think a lot of that got uh, removed with Blitz Sim, uh, but I think that unlocks at level 45. I could I'm, I'm, I could be wrong on the level that Blitz Sim unlocks at, but uh, use use Blitz a lot to to get to know these teams. All right. Uh, another question I get asked is how far should I build up these teams and these characters before moving on to other characters? Uh, and, and a lot of it is going to depend on those, th on those things. Arena, raids, and war. Are you struggling in arena? Well, you, you should build up whatever arena team you're using a little bit more. If you're struggling in raids, same thing. Uh, once once you got that set, you can move on to other teams. Here's the exception, though. For legendary characters, you want to get them at that star level. For all of the legendary characters except for Phoenix, it's that five gold star level. For Phoenix, it's that six gold star level. So if you're looking for legendary unlocks, Wait till they're at least five before you're moving on. If it's a non-legendary unlock, uh, the level, the gear, the stars, it's it's gonna be pretty fluid based on where you are in arena and raids and what you're what you're on your alliance is doing on war. So, but generally, try to at least for the legendary unlocks, try to get them to at least five stars. All right, dark dimension is another thing that you, you got to start to plan for. It doesn't unlock till level 65, so it's not something that you have to start planning on very early, but. You should start looking at which characters you're going to bring in. If we look at these Dark Dimensions, uh, level six or six stars is what you need to get into Dark Dimension one. I would not focus on this uh, at all. You're eventually going to get some characters up to level six or six stars. Uh, just bring in whatever characters you have. Take as much time. The rewards aren't that great. Where you want to really focus on is Dark Dimension two. Uh, gear 13 is what is required for that. So you can get five characters up. You can get through Dark Dimension 2 pretty quickly if you have the right characters. And uh, yes, get the gear on them. If you have all the gear and the resources, uh, I mean, percent-based characters that uh, do the damage like Minerva, Phoenix are still pretty good. Ghost is still pretty good in this game mode. Although there's a lot of newer characters that, that just smash this even without that percent-based damage. Uh, Dark Dimension 3, you're going to need your characters at level 14 to enter. This is not a very fun game mode. And the 
resources in Dark Dimension 3 aren't that valuable. Uh, right now, Dark Dimension 5 is the highest that we could go as of me recording this. You need gear tier 15. Not that easy to get all that gear. Uh, your reward for this is Doom. So it's a pretty good reward. Still involved in the meta right now. Not sure when you're watching this video. Doom may or may not still be involved in the meta, but still a character that you want to go after. Uh, Ultron is going to be very valuable for you as a newer and mid game player. He does drop off once you get Doom, but Ultron still very important for newer and mid game players. Uh, so get Ultron as, as soon as you can in Dark Dimension 2. And then uh, once once you get to the Dark Dimension 4, start, start working on Doom. But these are things I think you should focus on in the background. Some of the more important things, like I said, these campaign nodes, getting them to three stars, working on your proper team, and then working on a team in the background. And tip number 14, and I know this is a little self-promotion, but watch some of the content out there. There's a lot of great content creators for Marvel Strike Force. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have a lot of other content creators that I enjoy on my channel as well. Subscribe to them. Uh, and uh, there's, there's great content on Reddit, uh, Discord. There's a lot of help. Join all that stuff. So uh, just stay in touch with what is the current meta, what she should be working on, how things are shifting in the game. Uh, just stay tuned to a lot of the content because things do shift in this game. And then last but not least, number 15, know the value of offers. Uh, everybody has different valuations for these offers, how much they value them. Uh, this is this is my rationale and my valuation for power cores. Now, some people have a different valuation. I, I consider $1 100 power cores. So these 150 power cores, in my mind, $1.50, $3.75, $7.50. So right now, none of these are good values. But from time to time, you if you are a spender in this game, you will see some offers that will have a really good valuation for these power cores. And it'll include a lot of other stuff. Those are good ones to buy, in my opinion. And if you are going to spend some offers, uh, the way I look at it is how much time is it going to save me? So right now, Multiple Man kind of a coveted character because of Adam Warlock. How much time would this save me? So if I'm averaging and let's say let's say we're getting the bare minimum, let's say or not the bare minimum, the bare minimum is zero. But let's say we're getting two shards a day in that campaign node that you could farm Multiple Man in. Well, that's about 25 days to get these shards. So, you know, I, I, the way I look at it, is is saving 25 days worth of farming worth 30 bucks sometimes it is sometimes it's not and everybody has their own valuation on it if it is worth it for you to save these is uh, first to save these uh, 25 days maybe more maybe less depending on rng then it's a good value if it doesn't save you if, if it's not worth saving at time you know 25 bucks or 30 bucks is not worth saving 25 days in the game then don't buy it. And that's, that's the way I look at these offers. All right. And if you are someone that spends money in this game, uh, make sure you use the link down below, coins.valleyflying.com. That'll get you to the Amazon App Store. It tells you all how to use that and how you can save up to 20% off. It's not available in all regions, but if it's available in your region, uh, you could save some money with Amazon Coins. So that is it, guys. Those are my top 15 tips. Uh, mainly focus on new players getting a good start in this game. But if you are a mid-game player, if you're an end-game player, hopefully some of these tips help you as well well and uh and hopefully these tips can help some of your alliance mates or your friends but that is it guys hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully it helps you hopefully it helps one of your friends if it doesn't help you and i will see you next time we got another stream coming out tomorrow it's gonna be a hot tub stream and we got more videos coming out for marvel strike force and hopefully another video for marvel future revolution tonight so give me that fist bump before you go hope you have a great rest of your day check me out on twitter and i'll see you next time valley flying out